Most of the online resources for programming the Raspberry Pi Pico rely on MicroPython, which is of course much easier than C, but it seems kind of wussy to me, so in this video I'll be programming this in C, except I'll be using this little guy, which is the WaveShare RPI 2040. And this board is based on the uh, same chip as the uh, Pi Pico, except it's on the back. And it's got fewer pins, but it adds a reset button, which is very nice. And the LED on this one is a color LED, which is much harder to program. And the problem I set out to solve is with our microwave oven, because when this one finishes cooking, it does a series of beeps like this. And once it's done beeping, it won't do any more alerting. Now, this didn't used to be a problem, but nowadays the kids often make quite a ruckus at supper time, so either we don't hear the beeping, or we're too distracted to act on it, and then uh, next morning at breakfast time we discover there's a food item left in the microwave all night. Now some microwave ovens are smart enough to keep reminding you if you didn't take the food out. This one doesn't, and if we were to buy a new one, how would we know that it's one that actually keeps reminding? So I need to detect when the microwave is cooking, and when the door has been opened to retrieve the food, and I can detect both of these by how much current the microwave consumes with a clamp-on current transformer on this cable going to the microwave. And door open is also easy to detect because there's a light that turns on and that consumes power. So this uh, clamp-on current transformer essentially produces a small current for a big current flowing through here and I'm feeding that into the A to D converter on the uh, Pi Pico. And this is the schematic I've got. So I've got uh, two 1K ohm resistors to produce me a half range voltage, which is the center of the A to D range. That feeds into one side of my current transformer, and the other side feeds into the ADC channel 1. And there's a 100 ohm resistor that essentially turns the current that this produces into a nice voltage, and the cap going to ground to filter it a little bit. And that's how I can detect the current this current transformer is detecting. And then for alerting if food is left in the microwave, I've got this piezo speaker here hooked up to two of the outputs on here. That's this one here. I originally had it just hooked up to one output and ground, but it wasn't loud enough. But by hooking up to two outputs, I can essentially reverse these two and produce an AC signal with twice the amplitude versus hooking it just to ground because this thing is not very loud. So here's the main line of my code. I've got three states that I'm looking for, done, door open, and microwaving, and I just look at the uh, thresholds for the current level. It's in arbitrary units, not amperes or anything. And based on those three states, I detect whether the food was taken out or whether the food is still in the microwave and we need to alert because it's been in there for a while. And also beep if the door is left open just to not wear out the light bulb. So that's all there is to that. Now I'm using Notepad++ to edit my code here. And I just use an uh, old-fashioned makefile because I'm no fan of integrated development environments. I much prefer to just use tools that I'm comfortable with. And I'm actually running my whole development environment on a Raspberry Pi 4 that's connected to the Pico via USB. I was going to run a development environment just on the PC using Windows System for Linux, and I got it set up and compiling code and all that, but I ran into problems with the uh, Pico tool, which is a nice command line tool that you can use to just upload code onto this thing very fast. It uh, basically reboots the thing when it needs to, which means I don't have to touch the Pi at all to load code. But I ran into a problem getting Pico Tool to run on the PC. I kept running into a libUSB problems trying to build a Pico Tool under WSL and there wasn't a pre-made executable that I could just get. I did find the pre-made executable of Pico Tool that would run under Windows Native not WSL, but that version of the Pico tool couldn't just reset the uh, Pi Pico for me, which means I would have had to push the reset button on a little WaveShare thing, or if I had been using a regular Pi Pico, I would have had to unplug it from USB and hold the boot select button every time I wanted to load code, and that's a no-no for me. So what I've got here is two SSH sessions logged into my Raspberry Pi 4. This one runs uh, Minicom, and that just uh, essentially over serial uh, does my debug monitoring and in this one I do the compiling. So to compile I've got it set up, uh, I just alias m to a make and that does the build and then to load the code I just type lo and that aliases to this script which basically just runs this and it loads about this fast uh, so and now the code is loaded. 
And so that's the nice thing because I iterate very quickly. I didn't have to touch this thing. So iterating the code, trying a new thing is very fast. So I needed to write three IO routines to run on here and do things. The first one was just to set the LED to a color, which turned out to be much more complicated than I thought it would be because it's one of those uh, programmable color LEDs. Next one was sensing the current from the current clamp. And then the last one is just to beep the speaker. So here's my code to program the LED. The LED is one of those that people use in LED strips where you can have a whole bunch of them daisy chained together. I only need to program the first one because that's the one that's built onto here. And this code essentially pulses the sequence of pulses that's needed to put out there. I needed some delays that are actually in microseconds and the only way to get that right that I knew of was to do a delay loop in assembler. So I've got some inline assembler here and it just calls it with how many iterations to loop. That gives me those things and this just essentially uh, pulses out 24 bits which is the RGB value. If there was a chain of LEDs then I'd be running this code once for every LED to program the ones down the chain. So the regular Pi Pico from Raspberry Pi only has just a green LED that you can turn on and off but it's dead simple just to set it with an IO line so that's actually quite nice but having figured out how to do the RGB on the LED I really like the option of showing different things with the LED and I'm making good use of that. The next routine I needed is something just to get some measure of current and that's in a separate module and this actually runs on the second core of the Pi Pico that way I don't have to worry about how the timing of this gets interfered with anything else. I just run it in the main loop and have delays in here. So it does an ADC read every millisecond, averages four of those together, actually sums them, then computes a running average to get essentially the uh, DC level, and then it computes deviations from that to compute sort of a running standard deviation, and that is what I use as my measure of current. So it's just an arbitrary A to D unit, not anything milliamps or anything like that. And so this just keeps a uh, running average, and if I need the current, I call this function, which returns what the current, average current is. And then in my main line, if I've decided that I need to alert that there's food in the microwave, I call do food beep. And that's just uh, this function here. And I use two IO pins, uh, one for each side of this uh, beeper thing. And so essentially, I just toggle both of those which reverses the polarity going into the piezo and gives me twice the AC amplitude because if I just have one side to ground the effective AC amplitude is only actually half the voltage. And because I have serial hooked up with this console here I can also receive characters so in my main loop here I check if there's a character that's been received and if there has been one received it goes into the test menu which is down here so if I go into here and I push T I'm entered a test menu and from that I can do various things like testing the uh, beep for a food. And that food beep is not very loud at all but if this piezo speaker is actually in a block of wood like this then it's much more noticeable. And it doesn't need to be super loud because if we don't hear it well this thing just keeps doing it every minute or so so eventually we'll hear it and we'll take that food out <laughs> before the meal is done I hope. I've just shortened all my timeouts by quite a lot to demonstrate this more quickly, so we'll do some cooking. And that's done, and this is now detected there's food in there. And it does the alert once in a while. Until I open the door, and the status LED is now yellow to indicate it's detected the door open. And now it goes back to blue, no blinking because everything's okay. And then another mode I've added is if I leave that door open. That'll do a periodic beep just to remind me to close that door. I reproduced my circuit just by soldering components to a 9-pin header. Now I've made a wooden enclosure for this whole thing. Which is much bigger than needed, but still tiny. And uh, this goes in here like so, and then that holds the, uh, the Pico in place. Then I need some strain relief for this wire. So this little block pinches this wire, keeps it from getting pulled out. This is the lid, piezo goes in the hole here. And this screw kind of holds it in place. And that goes on here. 
Uh oh. And it turns out this screw hits this part here, so I have to carve away a little bit. And then the front, I've got the uh, plexiglass cover here, not just to show off the circuitry, the, the nice looking part of the circuitry, but also because I want that LED to be visible. And the lid also holds the USB cable securely in place, so that I don't have to worry about uh, bending the connector on here. Now I've got our upstairs microwave plugged into this extension cord with a current probe on there. It says blue, as in it's not being used. Goes red. Microwaving done, and it's realizing there's food left in there, so it's doing the alert. Open the door, goes yellow. Condition cleared. Now I could make a shorter version of this cord, which I need because I need to be able to clamp my current sensor on just one wire. But uh, these connectors on the ends are actually quite a bit more expensive than the microcontroller. So that would more than triple the cost of the project. So what I've done instead is I cut this cord to the microwave open and separated one conductor so that I can clamp my current sensor around just one of them. And now I've got it mounted up here, so let's microwave a little bit. And this is now blinking saying there's food in there. And the timeouts are set really short right now. Let's open the door. Condition is cleared. And now let's open the door and leave it open. And it's beeping, so this is all working. And I've got the Raspberry Pi hooked up so I can change the timeouts to be less annoying. And now with code with longer timeouts loaded, I've got my cheapest USB adapter and the short USB cable. It's all ready to be used. And if you want to do something similar, or at least read my code, I've uploaded this to my GitHub page. And the history on this actually goes way, way back, because this was originally a totally different project, and I just uh, modified it for this, so the history goes way, way back to an entirely different project. So it's hard to justify this sort of development effort just to alert for the microwave, but uh, to me, it was a fun project, and it was actually something useful, and I quite like this WaveShare RP2040-0 uh, variant of the Raspberry Pi Pico. That's uh, this thing here. For this kind of project, it's ideal, and I like the color LED, but uh, of course that introduced some challenge. But uh, the Pico as a whole actually introduces some challenges that I'm not used to, uh, because this thing, most of the resources online are for programming in Python, and I wanted to program it in C. And even in Python, there's fewer resources online for programming this than there is for a regular Raspberry Pi or an Arduino. So it's always a lot more work to figure out how to do something with this thing, but uh, I guess I was looking for a bit of a challenge, because I'm a crusty old embedded systems programmer, and <laughs> programming this in Python just seemed kind of wrong. Plus, with C, I can really make the code responsive. I don't have to worry about, is it going to be fast enough? And in terms of raw computing performance, these things are comparable to early Pentium class PCs. It's really quite amazing. 